Okay, so the talk that everybody was looking forward to, which was Spectre Dev's talk, which was titled Hypervisor, How We Broke the PS5 Hypervisor at Hardware.io has been completed. We did get some notes where Spectre Dev had stated that additionally, we will reveal two previously undisclosed vulnerabilities in the hypervisor version up to 2.50. And it didn't take very long for after this talk was completed, Spectre Dev published over here on X stating, I've published the repo for Bypervisor. We love name vulnerabilities out there. Obviously, that is in reference to pppon. And he stated that it contains exploit implementation for two PS5 hypervisor bugs for 2.xx and lower. That the slides from the talk and the video on demand should be published soon. The slides and the talk or the video on demand has not been released. Now, a few things that we can learn from what was publicly posted over on Twitter, which as you know, I've probably been monitoring it way more than I should have, but there has been some slides that I think would be a bit interesting to look at. Now, the actual site itself obviously posted a few pictures of things such as Spectre himself, as well as the beginning title slide and then there was a few more slides in here so it basically went through the state of playstation 5 hacking and hypervisor workarounds so it says that this allows ps4 homebrew to run on the ps5 allows limited debugging and introspection and then there was a few limitations down there when we do get the full slide deck i will be taking a look at that here on the channel so I won't waste much of your time looking through some of these. Now, along with the main conference organizer that was releasing some photos here, there was some more basically coming from this person right here. And they just had a few more slides, which just kind of showed breaking the hypervisor bug one, unprotected jump tables, which is described in the GitHub repo, which we'll take a look at in just a second. And then there was a, another slide here, which was breaking the hypervisor bug one unprotected jump tables. Now, if we come over here and we jump into the repo, we can see that there is a lot of activity that is happening just right now. So the latest commit was just a little over three hours ago, and this was turning off debug logging and if we go into the commits here you can see there's been tons of different updates to just like the readme script you know working fake package uh all kinds of different things that's been going on in here. taking a look at the repo it did state that a ps5 hypervisor exploit for 1.xx to 2.xx firmwares and if we scroll down into this Let's just read a bit of this summary together. So this is a PS5 hypervisor exploit for basically anything that is under that 2.xx firmware. Two vulnerabilities and two exploit chains are contained in this repo. They are dependent of each other and either can be used. So here is where we're going to get two different exploit chains. So this one, which is the jump table, and this one, as stated in here, is going to be more of kind of the older method. And then there is the QA flags exploit, which is this is a bit more of the current. Now, jumping into this first jump table exploit, which again, we saw a couple of different you know slides over here, right here for the unprotected jump tables. So jumping back into this, it says that this is the first exploit, and this uses a vulnerability where hypervisor code jump tables are shared with the guest kernel and is contained in the old jump table exploit. By hijacking the jump table entry for this call, code execution in the hypervisor can be achieved. So there is a bit more details in this, but I believe what makes 
the most sense to go over is, is that it says that this method requires a fair number of gadgets and offsets, which is the main reason this exploit isn't the primary one. Also, currently only breaks the hypervisor on the core of the rope chain run zone. The hypervisor is still active on other cores and would need to be disabled. And then the other one, or the one that is recommended, is the QA flags exploit. It says the primary and recommended exploit takes advantage of the fact that the system quality assurance flags are shared between the hypervisor and the guest kernel. When the hypervisor initializes, the init code for constructed nesting tables will check QA flags for the system level debugging flags. And then it states right here that these flags are not reinitialized by the secure loader upon resume from sleep mode, though the hypervisor is. And that by setting the SL flag, putting the system to sleep and resuming, we can edit the guest kernel's page tables to make kernel.txt read and write, allow dumping of the kernel and hooks and patches. Now, there is a few notes here, and that is, is that currently only firmware 2.50 is supported. And I know a ton of us are not on those super low firmwares. Even myself, I'm only on a 3.20, or that is my latest one. But it does say for 2.50, it is supported for the homebrew enabler, and that other firmware versions will be added at that time which is pretty much how it usually goes. Uh, the exploit is called bypervisor.f, will need to be sent twice, one before suspending the system and again after resuming, and that you'll have to put the system into rest mode manually yourself. Now, there was a pretty interesting pull request that I did notice regarding this one right here, and that was up here by Lightning Mods and... I believe they already have a fix, which is make the payload auto enter rest mode when needed. So anyway, you can see there's all kinds of, you know, activity that's going to be going on in this. Now, just to see what is currently included here, it is kernel dumping code has been commented out. Uh, code to decrypt the system library self files over TCP and then a homebrew enabler or 2.50 firmware, which means uh, fake self and fake packages would be supported. Now, I'm not going to go through how to get this to work because it's pretty self-explanatory there, but do keep in mind that if you are going to do this, that this is at the very beginning stages, and again, you would have to have a 2.50 system in order to get this to work. But as things go by and we actually get the talk and we get the slides, I'll take a look at those and hopefully we'll get some more information. So anyway, thank you so very much for watching this quick update and I'll see you in the next one. Michael, out!